Hey guys, it's Multiplier. We're with Sonic Academy looking at the layout of Circle 2. And then we're also going to have a look at how the modulation routing works because there's got some cool features with regards to modulation routing that I've never seen in any other synth before, but they're super useful and just super fun and playful. So it's a lot of fun. But first of all, let's feel more comfortable, more at home with Circle 2. So let's look at the layout and how the whole thing is structured. So the way I see it, there are four main sections to Circle 2. There are three columns in the middle, in the main bit of the screen. So we have a left column, a middle column, and a right column of modules. And then we also have a pull-up menu from the bottom, which is almost like your advanced configuration section. But the left-hand column, first of all, is gonna be our source modules. This is where we generate our sound. We have four oscillator modules in the top bit. So we can see here, for example, we could turn on this oscillator and choose between either analog, wavetable, or VPS. We're going to have a look at the oscillators in more detail in the next video, but for now, just kind of get your head around the idea that this whole left-hand column is how we generate our sound. So we also include things like the noise and the feedback module, because while the feedback module and the noise module aren't technically oscillators in the same way that maybe a wavetable or a, a sawtooth oscillator is an oscillator generating our sound, but this feedback and this noise module still contribute to the main source sound that we then do further processing to afterwards. And then once we have this initial sound generated, what we need to do is some form of modification or shaping. Now Circle 2 calls this middle column the modifier section. I personally look at it as the, the shaping or the mixing or the just the further working section where we take our initial sound and we do some shaping. I personally like the word shaping because we tend to do things like filtering in particular and sometimes some saturation either side of the filtering. And we also include things like the mixer in this so we can mix between each of these oscillators. So we could pull down say oscillator two. So we had less of oscillator two coming through, maybe more noise. And then these three bits here. So we have some distortion, some EQ, some filtering. This all happens before the main filter, the main filter being this section here. And this main filter is pretty cool actually. We're gonna dive into it in quite a bit of detail in one of the later videos because it's such an integral part of making our sound. But we can choose between a filter or a dual filter. And then we do, we have the same set of further shaping as we do before this main filter. So we can again do some more EQ, filtering, saturation, and so on. So these main bits is where we take our, our source sound and we do some manipulations to it. We do some modifications and shaping to make it into more what we want it to be. It's worth mentioning at this stage as well, we also have this VCA module at the end of this modification column. Now VCA is, it technically stands for Voltage Controlled Amplitude, I think. I'm not an analog synthesizer myself, I don't personally use all that analog gear, but I think VCA is uh, basically referring to those analog days where you'd have a voltage controlled amplitude, but it's basically just a volume control that we have at the end of all this filtering. I personally think they shouldn't have called it VCA, they should have called it gain or amp, but it's basically just an overall volume. And we can see that. So if we load up a new preset and then we play our sound and then play around with this VCA, we'll see that it is just a, it's basically a gain parameter. And then we can also see something that we're gonna look at later on. We can see that the green modulation source is mapped to it, which happens to be our main envelope. So it definitely is our main amp, our main volume, our main gain parameter of our synth. But what we also have is a, a final, final master control. Like most synths, we do have a master meter and a master gain parameter, which happens right at the very, very end of our signal processing. So if we're say playing a sound, and maybe these meters were in the red, so they were clipping. What we could then do is turn it down. Or similarly, if maybe this meter was a bit low, we wanted a hotter signal coming out of circle two, we could turn it up. So that's just with this master gain parameter. So now we know what the left column is and we know what the middle column is. This right column is where all the modulation happens. So this is where, I mean, modulation is basically just a fancy word for change. And whenever we wanna make a sound, whether it's a super obvious or aggressive dubstep wobble that's got some super obvious change programmed in, or whether it's a more subtle lead or a more subtle pad sound, we still need to program lots of change in. Programming change is where we program complexity and it's where we 
and especially how we make complex and interesting sounds. So we will be spending quite a lot of time in this modulation section, but this literally all happens in this far right column. And we have five modulation sources, each with a different color, which we can turn on or off. And for each one of these modulation modules, we'll cover it in a lot of detail in one of the later videos. But as you can see, we can choose between an envelope, an LFO, or a sequencer. And we will spend most of our time in this main view here in these main three columns. This is where we get creative, it's where we program all our sounds, it's where we create our different timbres, our different tones, our different modulations. But we also do have this fourth section that I referred to, which is the advanced configuration section, which I suppose you would call it some sort of maybe a pull-up menu. So you see how we have these five tabs along the bottom, let's say settings. By clicking it, it pulls up this new window, which we can then hide away by clicking that same thing again. So if we want to configure maybe, or set up our Unison, or set up Legato, or maybe set up something with a glide or velocity in the keyboard section. This all happens in this bottom section. Now we don't tend to spend a lot of time in this bottom section because you tend to either Maybe if we have a particular sound in mind, maybe it's a super saw and we know we want a lot of voices, we'll go directly to settings before we program our sound, dial it all in, set up our polyphony, set up our unison, and then hide it away and then program our sound. Or maybe, maybe we're actually, we've already been programming our lead sound. We're dialing in the timbre, dialing in the way it sounds. We're getting it sounding pretty good, but then we realize, hold on, wouldn't wouldn't it be quite cool if we could glide between notes? So we'd hop into the keyboard section, play around with the glide settings, and then hide it back away. So it's not a section we spend a lot of time in, but it's still important because it controls some super fundamental parts of our synthesis. Things like Portamento, things like Unison, things like Legato. These are some fundamental settings which we can't ignore if we want to make proper professional sounds, but at the same time, we don't spend a lot of time actually tweaking the settings. We tend to set it and forget it. And they are the four main sections. I suppose the top bar may be its own section. I wouldn't personally call it a section because we don't really do much with it, but this is where we would do things like initialize the preset by hitting new, and it's where we would save our presets. We could choose a preset in this preset manager bit in the middle. Granted, I prefer using the actual sounds pull-up menu in the bottom left corner because we can dive into actually banks of presets, which is pretty cool. And we can also do things like map our MIDI controllers to settings within Circle 2. We're not going to cover that in this video series, but you can do it. And then as I showed you earlier, we also have those master parameters in the top right. But I personally don't look at that top bar as its own section. The important thing to get your head around is the idea that Circle 2 happens in these columns. We have the source generation on the left hand side, then we have the modification or the shaping section in the middle, and the modulation or the change section on the right hand side. And then this final pull up menu from the bottom Bottom, which is, I suppose, its own section as well for advanced configuration. So now we feel a little bit more comfortable with Circle 2. Until we use it a little bit and until we know what quite a few of the settings do, we won't feel super comfortable, but hopefully you feel a bit more happy with how the whole thing looks now. Let's have a look at modulation routing. So modulation routing. Modulation routing is, remember modulation is change and routing is how we program one of these modulation sources. So if we take maybe this envelope over here, how we would program this modulation source to a parameter within Circle 2. And we can map pretty much any parameter. Wherever you see a color, this is something that can be a modulation source. So you see here we have green, purple, blue, and so on. And wherever you see a little hole, so you see how we have a little hole here, this can be an endpoint of your modulation. So we can map this purple envelope, where this little purple dot is, to this empty slot here. So if we have our sound, I prefer horizontal in this case. Let's play around with this one. So maybe we want to modulate or change this parameter just like we were doing there. Then what we want to do is figure out what modulation source is the right source in this particular case. I think an LFO will be a little bit cooler than an envelope, so we'll change it to LFO. And then what we'll do is simply drag this little purple dot in the top left of that modulation source into this empty hole over here. So in fact, notice what happens as I hold down the note and do this. Now 
Notice what was happening as I was holding down the note and as I was holding that modulation source over the top, I hadn't let go, as I was simply holding it over the top, it was previewing what that modulation was doing. This is something I've never seen in any other VST before. It may exist, I've used I think I've used pretty much every VST that's come out in the last few years, and I've never seen this before. It's super useful because what that basically allows you to do is once you have a lot more things set up, you have more oscillators working, more filters, more, more stuff happening, what you can simply do is hover over each one of these little holes, and it's just a nice way to experiment. You can hover it over and just try different things until it sounds really cool. I absolutely love it. It's super nice. And then another super nice feature about this modulation is the fact that each modulation source has its own colour. So when you have a lot of things happening, you can see at a glance that this particular parameter here is modulated by the purple LFO. So we know exactly which LFO that is. Maybe we have a blue LFO as well and we won't get them confused. And there's no real limit to what you can modulate and how you modulate it. So for example, you can even have this LFO here, this blue LFO we just turned on, modulating this purple LFO, which is then modulating a parameter of this VPS oscillator. So we could drag this blue guy as we're holding down the note. We don't have to preview the note at the same time, but we could do. We can hold down the note. <laughs> So you see now we have this LFO controlling the rate of this purple LFO, which is then doing some modulation, which is changing the timbre or the character of this oscillator VPS. <laughs> And then what we can also do is change how much modulation is happening. So if we click this modulation here, we can see there's a purple LFO modulating it, or purple modulation source. We don't know it's an LFO without looking. Once we click it, we can actually pull down this slider to determine how much modulation is happening. <laughs> And these are actually bipolar or maybe bidirectional might be a better word. It's a bipolar or bidirectional modulation. So what we can do is pull it below zero. So it will basically do the inverse of whatever it was doing if it was doing what it was normally doing. I'll give you some more examples when we cover modulation in a later video, but it's worth noting that's why we can go below zero. So we can do inverse modulations. And that is essentially modulation routing. It's not too difficult, right? One of the things I love about Circle 2 is how easy it is to do these main things. There's no complicated mod matrix where you have to go into submenus and figure out what things are doing, and there's no super advanced, fiddly, idiosyncratic names. It's just nice and simple, and it's nice and colorful. There's lots of visual feedback. I absolutely love it. In the next video, we're going to have a look at the oscillators. We're going to go through VPS oscillator, wavetable oscillator, and analog oscillator, and also have a look at the different parameters within those oscillators to understand what they're doing, as well as giving you some useful tips in terms of best using them. I've been Multiplier. Hope you enjoyed.